the song I Can See For Miles comes into my head. I have no idea why at this spot. Morning, friends we are now just leaving the Harshaw trailhead which is just outside of Patagonia I spared myself a little bit of the road walk to be honest out of Patagonia because it's approximately a three mile road walk on a busy paved road so it's not conducive for videography it's dangerous it's boring <laughs> so I, uh, you know, got into Patagonia last night, then got picked up by the parents. We went out to dinner at the Wagon Wheel Saloon, which was very good. Would highly recommend it. Some great Mexican food there. Camped and then uh, got a late start today. Helped my parents pack up the trailer because they're going to be moving to another campsite that's a bit closer to Sierra Vista and Miller Peak, which is obviously ultimately where we're ending up after today there will only be two more days until i hit the border and i am so excited but also so nervous for that ascent of miller peak it's gonna be awesome though so today after i left patagonia i entered passage number three I've done 40 passages of this trail so far. It's just amazing. I can't, I can't believe it, and I've done it. <laughs> you know, I don't know how the heck I did it. I know I've said this in previous videos, but it's amazing. It can truly be accomplished if you stick to a goal and work on it every day. Eventually you get somewhere. So right now we're in the Canelo Hills West passage which is passage three and uh yeah, this is a hill all right <laughs> so far it's very brambly grassland chaparral desert type stuff looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day in some wide open country so friends gone about three miles so far today in the first hour and a half been taking my time with some uh, photography and uh, things of that sort. It's my first river crossing of today. Hopefully one of my only. <laughs> we'll see what happens though. I have about 10 more miles to go till my trailhead. And I'm over the first big incline of today. It's not really anything monumental. Just some sizable hills. So uh, over the first one of them. Now it's gonna be relatively flat for like, well like a, I think I'm following a creek bed for the next little bit. Hopefully I don't have to cross as much, that's why I say that. But uh, the elevation gain will be pretty gradual for the next eight miles or so. And then I get one last good hill right before my stopping point for today. <sighs> it's a good day. For hike just a little toasty it's supposed to get up to 70 degrees today it's january guys this is ridiculous too warm for winter <laughs> but also hopefully it's too warm for the snow that's still up on miller peak hopefully that won't be waiting for me when i get there <sighs> check in in a bit
everybody. Just uh, lost trail just a little bit back in this uh, little cow pasture. Just a bunch of cow trails going everywhere. But because it was an open wide space, I took the advantage to fly my drone around a bit. And uh, it crashed itself into a tree. It started suddenly losing altitude, even though I was pushing the uh, ascent stick. It just dropped straight into a tree. Second day with it out in the field. It feels really good. Fortunately, it's actually completely fine. I'm roughly halfway through my day now, and it's almost two o'clock. I'm hoping to be to uh, my end point by four. So I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of hiking. But today's honestly going much smoother and quicker than yesterday. Maybe because it's a little less elevation change and a little bit lower, who knows. Maybe I'm getting stronger again. <laughs> we can hope. Um, but we're making our way and it's honestly a really fun day so far. So, aside from crashing the drone, of course. actually just uh, flushed out what I believe to be my first Coos whitetail deer. It's a specific type of deer that we only have uh, in certain parts of the United States. You know, uh, I believe it's, it's either a crossbreed between a mule deer and a whitetail, or they're just genetically smaller whitetails. Sadly, I flushed it and spooked it up so bad that I didn't get super close uh, photos. So it's actually their hunting season right now, so they're all a little extra skittish. But very pretty, and it had this really fluffy tail. I've never seen that on a deer before. This is the uh, last big climb of the day. I'm somewhere over two miles, between two and three miles from Canelo Hills, or Canelo Pass Trailhead. Sorry, going up a hill, trying to talk is pretty hard. <laughs> oh. This area that I'm hiking through is very interesting biologically. And I hiked through because I haven't hiked through something like this really. Just that thick grassland. Only problem is a lot of the little brambly bushes, like this guy right here, is just covered in thorns. <laughs> I've karate chopped so many of those little sticker bushes more times than I'd like to admit. It hurts. <laughs> Ooh. It's one heck of a climb, guys. It pales in comparison to Miller Peak in two days, I'm sure, but... Oh, it's been flat all day until now. <laughs> one more look. It's crazy beautiful. All the way over there, that's Mount Wrightson. It's the one... I summited yesterday. Well, I didn't summit it, but did the ridge line just next to it on the AZT. Talk to you guys in a bit. Hello, friends. Over there, that's the Huachuca mountain range. That's where Miller Peak is. Other side of that is Mexico. 
it's not quite like over it that way, it's more that way. But I'm gonna approach the side of that mountain, go up it, follow the ridge line, and then drop off of it to get into Mexico. Well, to the border at least. That's in two days. My approach there is tomorrow. And I am one mile from my end point today. It's been an interesting day. A few challenges, a few tribulations. Some beautiful area though. Some beautiful nature. Some beautiful trail for the most part. I just don't do well with very rocky trail. Once I uh, get a little tired, that's how I start to hurt myself. So my hips a little jacked up as is my <laughs> leg, but I think we'll be able to walk it off. You know, that, uh, oh, what, what's it called? Active healing, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we'll try it, hopefully it works out. Good morning, friends. Started down at the Canelo Pass Trailhead today. Somewhere over there, other side of the hill. Um, done about a mile and a half, straight up a hill to start my day. It's a good way to start things, I guess. But also, this view behind me. Just wow. Isn't that crazy looking? That's the Huachuca Mountain Range. So what stands between me and Mexico now. I just have to get over to them and up and over them. Really excited. Should be a great day. I had about a half a mile until my first really big climb uh, today is over. And I have about seven miles until my second big climb. I'm hoping to cover about 19 miles today. That'll get me to the Miller Peak Wilderness Boundary, which has a parking lot. Now on the descending side of the first little saddle for today. Some beautiful, beautiful panoramic views from the top. You can just see for miles, all the way into Mexico even. Views from two countries, three different mountain ranges at least, and a whole lot of openness. It's beautiful. I'm so grateful to be able to be out here and doing this. You know, it's not an opportunity that many people have or that many people take advantage of if they even can. And I'm so grateful that the things lined up in my life perfectly for this to be a possibility and for uh, this whole hike and for this trail, you know, I was born at the right time. I was born with the right skill set and the right interests to make this dream happen and I'm sure it was a lot of hard work of planning and preparing to do this, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> Even if I had to redo the Red Hills section, <laughs> wouldn't trade it for anything. made it on top of my last big hill until Miller Peak. I didn't even realize that it was my second big climb of today until I was 0.2 miles from the top, which feels really good. Gives me some more confidence. And my legs are feeling great. I'm feeling great. We're gonna finish this one strong, friends. I'm really looking forward to it. All the way out there, that's Mexico. According to Guthook, I'm just over 26 miles via trail from the border. Isn't that ridiculous? Can't believe it.
Morning, friends. Today is the day going up and over Miller Peak. Just got to the wilderness boundary and we're going up from here. I'm feeling really good. Stretched out really good this morning and hydrated well last night and this morning. Loaded up on caffeine, a good hearty breakfast. And I feel invigorated and ready to do this thing. Here is, I believe, Sunnyside Creek. Looks just gorgeous. That clear water. Oh, and now my feet are wet. Yeah, that's what I get from multitasking. Luckily, I'm wearing my darn tough socks, so it should dry out soon enough. Apparently I'm going to be hiking through a bit of snow today, so hopefully I don't freeze, but it's an adventure, right? I've said it a couple times before, but you can't spell misadventure without adventure, so let's go and do it. <laughs> Woo woo, Miller Peak Wilderness. So it begins about three miles at this steepness until I get to the top. Oh, this is something. <laughs> Toling, ice, snow, stuff. Oh, it's tough. Oh, I'm less than a half a mile from the Miller Peak turnoff. I don't know that I'm feeling it though. It's almost two o'clock. I kind of told myself if I wasn't up there by 1.30, I was gonna just not do it. The snow has slowed me down too much. Disappointing, but oh, the views from the trail have been stunning regardless. So I don't feel like I'm missing out on that much. But I might come back, not in the season of snows, to try that. Oh, oh God. Now it's steep downhill. 
and ice and snow. <sighs> Absolutely no fun. Oh. Pray for me, guys. Friends, I think it's time to make my descent. This has been an epic trip. It's been an epic hike today. It's definitely been one heck of a challenge for my last day. Makes me all the more grateful for the views up here and the whole experience, truly. The most important part about through hiking that I think I've gleaned through this experience at least through the specific experiences I've had is, it is so important to hike your own hike in all walks of life, even in through hiking. Don't let others tell you what you need. You know what you need. You know how to do your best. You just need to act on that. So many people in the world try to tell you how to live your life and they're not you. They haven't had the lessons you've had. They haven't had the struggles you've had. And it's important that you have confidence that you know what the heck you're doing and that you know you. Who knows yourself better than yourself, you know? Don't let your own limitations get in your way of your dreams and goals. Or don't let other people set limitations on you that set you, that's, that stick between you and your goals. Because that's no good. I mean, heck, even with this whole hike, I had to come back out four different times to successfully through hike the whole thing. There was up in Flagstaff when I took three or four days. I can't remember right now how many that was. It was three or four for my knee. And I got back out on trail. And then after the Mazet cells, my feet got so badly bruised that I had to take two weeks off of trail just to let them heal up. I got x-rays done the whole bit. Turned out I was fine. It was just a ligament issue. And then, just north of Mount Wrightson, at Forest Road 62, I had to take two months off of trail due to just constant winter storms up here. And even though I waited, there was still a mile and a half of snow just to get to this point. Everything happens for a reason, in one way or another. It's all a matter of perspective, how you apply it to your life. And it's so important to apply those things in a positive light that focus on your personal growth instead of how you're less than or how you could do better. If you could do better, do better. Or give yourself credit for what you're already doing. So many people are their hardest critic. And sometimes just getting that inner voice to be quiet lightens the load and gets you to the top of the mountain. Like me today, right now. My feet are still soaked from all that snow and the wind is blowing, and I am, I probably am hypothermic, but because of how beautiful it is up here, and what it took to really come to this moment right here, right now, it makes it so important that I take it for all it's worth. But I should get headed down this mountain now, because my parents are waiting for me at Montezuma Pass Trailhead, Tag to the monument with me. Let's go see Mexico, friends. Well, friends, just left the Montezuma Pass trailhead. 
picked up my parents. There's Mama Bear. There's Papa Bear. We have one more mile until the terminus. All downhill from here. We got over the one little bump coming out of the parking lot. Nice little hill and now it's coasting down to Mexico. Looking forward to the end of this. It's bittersweet in a way, but it feels good. Talk to you guys down at the monument. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Today was arduous. Today was beautiful. Today was perfect. Today marks the end of my 803 mile journey across Arizona. I struggle to find the words to express the whirlwind of emotion and significance today has for me. To sum it up best I can, here are three of my big takeaways from this experience. You will feel isolated, but you are never alone. Someone, somewhere, is cheering you on. Never forget that. The views that you work hardest for are the ones you'll remember most fondly. You won't tame the mountains. The mountains will tame you. Remember to take your time and revel in the beauty. This journey will be over before you know it. Friends, we did it. We made it to Mexico. <laughs> I can't believe that it actually happened. <laughs>